Hello, I'm Bob. And I'm Mila. Over the last few months, we've seen some really cool AI tech come out that had everyone's attention and blew our minds. I never thought AI could be used in creative occupations, but then we saw some amazing images being made by Dolly and Midjourney. But all that was nothing compared to the huge interest in ChatGPT. Over a million people signed up for it in just one week. But these tools and other generative AI tools like them have also faced some criticism and concerns. Very soon after ChatGPT was released, we started hearing stories about students using ChatGPT to cheat on school assignments, which added to the controversy related to whether the content created by AI is really original or creative. Yeah, and this issue goes beyond mere controversy. It's still unclear who owns the copyright to content generated by AI or who should be credited as the creator, which can be a contentious issue in the media industry. Also, if a generative AI algorithm is trained on a dataset of copyrighted material, the content it generates may contain elements that are copied from the original work, potentially leading to copyright infringement issues. One of the concerns I have about generative AI are around the use of deepfakes and other misleading content that's designed to influence public opinion or promote a certain agenda. It can have major geopolitical ramifications. Do you remember the deepfake video of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky telling his soldiers to lay down their arms and surrender the fight against Russia? While it was quickly proven fake, it was still dangerous because it made people question the authenticity of real videos of Zelensky that were later circulated. Imagine what could happen if deepfake videos could become undetectable by humans. We've clearly only just begun to start figuring out what the ramifications can be of AI. But today we're going to specifically focus on the ethical implications of it. It's a pretty complex and multifaceted topic. There's a lot of concern from the general public about how AI could impact their jobs. There's the potential for bias in algorithms and issues related to accountability and transparency and how it's developed and used. We also can't forget about the roles that tech companies and researchers play in making sure AI is developed and used ethically, as well as governments and regulatory bodies setting guidelines and standards. Oh, and let's not forget about the public's role in understanding and advocating for ethical AI practices. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. People often bring up job loss when we talk about the effects of AI. A lot of things can affect whether or not AI might replace a job, like how much education or training a job requires, how complex the work is, and how much data there is to help AI learn. Jobs that have lots of repeating tasks and lots of data, like manufacturing, data entry, and some customer service roles, are more likely to be taken over by AI. On the other hand, jobs that need more education and skills like research, analysis, and decision-making usually aren't as at risk. Although it's worth mentioning that even in these kinds of jobs, AI might be able to help humans rather than replacing them entirely. AI could cause some major disruptions in the job market and workers might have to adapt to new technologies. That means they'll need the chance to learn new skills and transition to new roles that AI might impact. It could be helpful if industry and education work together to make sure workers have the skills they need to adapt to new tech and industries. Governments and regulatory bodies could also help by creating policies and initiatives to assist workers who are affected by AI. This could include job retraining programs and support for small businesses. Basically, AI could potentially create new industries and job opportunities in the long run, and it can also make existing industries more efficient and productive. It's crucial to make sure that the benefits of AI like increased efficiency and productivity are shared with workers. This could mean things like profit sharing and fair wages. Another major ethics issue for me is bias. There have been numerous examples of AI systems that perpetuate and amplify biases present in the data they're trained on. One example is an AI algorithm called Compez that's used in the US to predict which criminals are more likely to reoffend in the future. It's used by judges to make decisions about things like jail sentences and bail amounts for these criminals. But there was this study by ProPublica that found that Compass was biased. It was more likely to predict that black criminals would reoffend in the future than it was for white criminals. Even for violent crimes, black criminals were misclassified as more dangerous almost twice as often as white criminals. So it looks like Compass somehow learned the inherent bias that's common in humans, which is that black people are more likely to commit crimes on average and more likely to commit crimes in the future. Another example was an AI algorithm Amazon had called the recruiting engine that was supposed to help them decide which job applicants to interview based on their resumes. The idea was to use AI to find talented people and get rid of human bias in the recruitment process. But it turns out the recruiting engine was biased against women. 
It's possible that this happened because the algorithm was trained on resumes that Amazon had received in the past 10 years, and most of the people who looked at those resumes were men with their own biases against women candidates. When Amazon checked out the algorithm, they found that it automatically scored down resumes with words like women on them, and it also automatically downgraded graduates of all women colleges. So, Amazon ended up scrapping the algorithm and not using it to evaluate candidates for recruitment. It's really important to make sure that AI algorithms are not biased. One way to do this is to use diverse and representative data to train the AI systems. This can help reduce bias in the algorithms themselves. Another way is to check for bias regularly through methods like human review and fairness metrics. There are also some best practices that can help with identifying and fixing bias in AI systems. Using diverse data, regularly testing and auditing and working with experts and stakeholders can all be helpful. Governments and regulatory bodies can also set guidelines and standards to make sure that AI is used ethically. Making sure that AI systems are transparent in their decision-making processes can help identify and address any potential biases, which can include providing clear explanations for how these systems make decisions. However, there have been concerns about the lack of transparency in this decision-making, which can make it difficult to identify and address biases or other ethical issues. There are a few different ways we can make AI systems more transparent. One option is to provide explanations for their decisions. This can be done through techniques like feature importance, which basically shows what factors contributed to a particular decision. Or you could use decision trees, which show the logical flow of decisions made by the AI system. Another way to increase transparency is to provide access to the data and algorithms that were used to train the AI system. This can help people understand how the algorithms work and what factors contribute to their decisions. Using diverse and representative data to train the AI system can also help make the decision-making process more transparent. If the algorithms aren't influenced by biased data, it can help to increase transparency. Finally, regularly testing and auditing the AI system can help identify and address any potential issues with transparency. Overall, these are all good practices for making sure AI systems are transparent and easy to understand. I totally agree. It's super important to make sure that AI systems are transparent from the get-go. There are a few reasons why this is so important. For one, it helps build trust in the technology because people are more likely to use and accept AI systems if they understand how they work. In addition, making AI systems transparent helps ensure that they are accountable for their actions, which is crucial for maintaining trust in the technology. This is especially important when it comes to areas where AI has the potential to significantly impact people's lives. Technology companies, researchers, governments, and regulatory bodies bear the responsibility to ensure that AI is developed and used properly. Technology companies have a particularly important role to play in this regard, as they are the ones developing and deploying AI systems. To ensure that their AI systems are ethical, they should have dedicated teams of researchers and engineers who focus specifically on this issue. They should also regularly test and audit their algorithms to identify and address any potential biases. Governments and regulatory bodies also have a role to play. They should be setting guidelines and standards for the ethical development and use of AI, as well as establishing regulations to ensure that AI is being used in a fair and just manner. It's important for all of us to take some responsibility when it comes to AI ethics. We should encourage public understanding and advocacy for ethical practices, which will help hold technology companies and governments accountable for the impacts of their products and policies. One thing we can do as individuals is educate ourselves on AI ethics and the potential impacts of on society. This can mean reading articles, books, and research papers on the topic, attending events or workshops, and engaging with experts in the field. We should also stay informed on the latest developments in AI and any ethical concerns related to them. This can include following news sources, subscribing to newsletters, and joining online communities or groups focused on AI ethics. And it's important for us to participate in the conversation about AI ethics. We can do this by joining online discussions, participating in workshops or events, or engaging with policymakers or decision makers. So, you just basically describes the reasons why we started this channel. I totally agree with that. I would also add that it's really important to support organizations and initiatives that promote ethical AI practices. There are tons of groups out there, like research centers, advocacy groups, and industry associations that are working on this stuff. By donating money or time or just supporting these organizations in other ways, we can help to raise awareness and encourage more ethical AI practices. 
Additionally, we should hold companies and organizations accountable when it comes to AI. As consumers, we have the power to demand that they use AI ethically. This could mean supporting companies that are committed to ethical AI practices and calling out companies that aren't meeting these standards. As we've seen, the ethics of artificial intelligence is a complex and multifaceted issue with a number of considerations to take into account. From the potential benefits of AI, such as increased efficiency and accuracy, to the potential drawbacks, including the potential for job loss and bias in algorithms, it's important to understand the full range of impacts that this technology can have on society. In the end, the ethics of AI comes down to accountability and responsibility. It's up to all of us, from technology companies and researchers, to governments and regulatory bodies, to the general public, to ensure that AI is developed and used in a way that benefits society as a whole. Thank you for watching this video. We know that ethics is not the most exciting topic, but it's a very important one. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and leave a comment and tell us what ethical issues concern you the most. And please consider subscribing if you are new to this channel.